Senator Brom, thank you so much for joining us. I'm gonna jump right in. Inflation is at a 40 year record high. Who is responsible for fixing it, the Fed or the government? The government clearly caused it in this case. Some of it a little bipartisan and that the uncertainty of COVID, we did a $4 trillion package and you can't shut the supply side down, which we did as a government, and then just throw all that purchasing power into a constrained economy. That's instant inflation. I wonder if the small business owners in Indiana did benefit from stimulus, from PPP loans, and how you square that with it's inflation. It's kind of like bragging about the gas prices coming down mm. when you did everything policy-wise to cause it in the first place. Yes, uh, small business had to be thrown a lifeline because government shut them down. But you got to remember, those businesses wouldn't have needed the uh, PPP program. We wouldn't have needed extended unemployment benefits if we had just done it a little differently. What is a single policy move that could be made to help consumers who are struggling today? Quit digging the hole deeper. Uh, forgiving $400 billion worth of student debt, uh, that was a really questionable policy move. And then the passing a bill that you had the gall to call the Inflation Reduction Act, it's not a good business plan uh, you know, for the country. And we're the second most indebted major economy in the world next to Japan. Let's talk about the impact of all of this on the midterms. Inflation yeah. is the, pretty much the number one issue nationally for voters. Yeah. Right up there, number two is abortion. Yeah. To what extent are you concerned about how Republicans will perform in November, given the pullback in abortion access? Well, let's look at November, which I'll get to in a second. And uh, that's been litigated so much because it's so imminent. Uh, I'm worried about Republicans in terms of what we do in the long run. We can't be the party of nowhere I'm not interested. Uh, we got to be a party that has a business plan for the country. So Republicans have got a lot of opportunity. Neither party, in my opinion, is giving the American public uh, a plan that you should be confident in because we haven't gotten there yet. But we do continue to report on stories of life Republican voters who are now switching their votes due to the reversal of Roe. Are you concerned about that? And I think you're going to find some life Democrats that have been in places where their cities aren't the same. It's many of them have become Republicans. You're going to always have your cultural issues. Uh, I was happy when it just went to the states. Uh, I think that's where it probably needs to be litigated anyway on things that we can't agree with. I've got my views on all the cultural issues, but a little libertarian in nature. And I think much, much of the younger generation is that way too. Uh, but on the other hand, we don't want government in our economic business as well to the extent it is, because it has not done well for the economy. You sound like someone who might be running for governor at some point. Do you care to break some news for us today <laughs> here? Or? I think I can do a few things as governor. Here, I'm mostly talking about it. All right, well, I'll take that then. Thank you so much, Senator. Really you appreciate your time. Thank yeah, you. You're welcome.